Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. By the way, if you haven't played Tavern Brawl yet, I highly recommend it. That was so much fun. I came in with the lowest possible amount of enthusiasm and extremely non-existent expectations, and I was blown away by how much pure fun it was. It's like a casual mode for Hearthstone. You don't need to have a full collection. You don't need anything. You can even beat some of the general quests there, and you even get gold for wins. It's just a really great mode. Quite a smashing success out of the out of the park by Blizzard. Uh, I'm just really impressed. Still hoping for a tournament mode someday, but uh, you know, let's let's wait a little while before we go too full on with the the complaining and the requests and the demanding. Let's just get back to this arena run. I would like to get two wins to finish up a daily quest. That's all I want from this deck. This deck doesn't seem that great. We do have a good old Twisting Nether in here. Up against Vergar the Paladin. Hmm. Well, I don't want to keep Soul Fire. That's just like conceding a, a week start i'd rather fish for my oh nope 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 D doesn't this deck have a decent number of early drops i can't remember nope all right well then if i were second player with the coin this would be a much better hand but unfortunately i'm at the mercy of this paladin now if he coins into a two drop i'm gonna fall really far behind because i got nothing i did throw away that soul fire i could have kept it but i just oh, i hate playing that on turn two hey an office engineer Woo. so that'll kill a recruit which could buy me some time um, hopefully that's just what he plays here. Okay, so it's also going to pop the shield off the bop, which is a pretty good use of that novice engineer as well. Hey, there's Twisting Nether. That could help me catch back up. So this is an interesting situation. He still has his coin, so he could easily come out with a true silver champion here. But if he doesn't have that... Oh, that's the coin. Oh, is it true silver fucking champion? No, oh, come on. Don't be true silver champion. It's true silver champion. So he gets to kill this. I do get one imp, but the shield of the minibot kills it. And then I got nothing to do next turn except for play Mr. Tinkers, who's 100% guaranteed to die to the weapon. Well, I really needed him not to have that card, but he had it. Oh, I still don't have anything to play. Christ. Well, I wouldn't have wanted to use Soulfire against this anyway, so. Trying this out just to die to the weapon. Then I have to play Sludge Belcher, I think. So that'll be um, responding to his shielded bot and whatever he plays for four mana here. I'm pretty far behind. Squire, okay. And muster for battle. Wow. All right, well, this sucks because I really would love to play the uh, Dread Infernal here. <laughs> Dread Infernal would be pretty spectacular. If he actually plays a Quartermaster, I will shit my pants. But, it, you know, you shouldn't necessarily expect that in the arena. I mean, that's, that is an epic... So it's a hard combo to pull off. Muster for battle, like I've often said, is just a great card to play in its own right. So hopefully he pops this shield, although I doubt he will. Then uh, everything's going to die to Dread Infernal. Which is a card, you know, it's a common card, but I find I never really play around it. I have a feeling most people don't. I hope he kills this, sacrificing as few of his creatures as possible. All right. The Shielded Bot gets the Divine Shield. Is he going to use this thing? He is. Perfect. Alright, now this thing is going to um, live through the Dread Infernal. Which is unfortunate. Because it means that... Um, well, let's see. He's got 5 damage. I guess it doesn't quite actually kill the Dread Infernal, does it? So maybe I could get away with that thing. Surviving. Okay, so that basically canceled out Muster for battle, because he put this weapon over the Muster weapon, and then this killed off his recruits. So granted, he did use a couple of them to kill off my little ooze, but that's fine. So card-wise, we're now okay, because he didn't put anything big down. He put down a bunch of things that all died to this Infernal. He's got the buff, it looks like. Ah, Divine Shield. I see. So he doesn't quite get to kill my Dread Infernal here. He just uh, gets it down real low. Unless he has something else. He needs one damage to finish it off. That's not going to do it. Alright, so I get to kill off his Violet Teacher. Oh, he's going for the face. I see. Hmm. This might be a little early to go for the face, though. I mean, I still have 21 health. But I guess I kind of see what he's, what he's doing here. You know, by leaving this al alone, he's making me do the kind of unpleasant thing of running into it to kill it. Um, that was smart. That, that was smart. I'll give that to him. Still, though, I think this is not as dangerous as the Violet Teacher. So let's just uh, kill that off. And play this stuff. 
I don't want to solify because I don't want to lose Twisting Nether. So he can pop the shield to kill my Infernal. Then this 3-3 three, three is still pretty good. I could use Twisting Nether. Depends on what he what he throws out. Consecration, all right. Ah, I see. So he's actually going to get to keep the Divine Shield on that thing. And he's continuing to bear down on my face. So do I pop a really underwhelming Twisting Nether here? It seems a little odd to do so, but it also seems kind of right, because otherwise this is very difficult to kill. So let's hit him in the face, let's do that. And he, he's got a little bit of a life edge, he's got the play. Oh my god, seriously? Oh my god, I shouldn't have played Twisting Nether. Fuck me sideways. Um... Should I play this thing? I don't know if that makes any sense. Let's see what we can find. I should have done that first, actually. Yeah, should have definitely done that first. Well, Noyatron holds out pretty well against this force tank, but I don't have any siphon souls, so that thing's just going to be really hard to kill. Another two silver champion. Man, I should have waited on that. I should have just killed off his micro machine. That was a really smart play. He hit me in the face with that divine shield creature, hoping I wouldn't feel like killing it, and it totally worked. Um. Yeah, it just totally worked out for him. I didn't want to throw in myself at it twice, so I used Twisting Nether, and that was my undoing. So he's going to hit me for 11 damage here, which means I can't actually uh, life tap. Let's do this and that. Ah, man, I misplayed. I think I would have been fine if I had just killed off that Micro Machine and used Twisting Nether after he played this thing. So he needs one more damage to kill me. He's fishing for the damage by giving us both a couple of cards. And looks like he found the Blessing of Kings. God fucking damn it. Well, that was tough. I mean, he had a really good deck, and he drew great cards. But with that Dread Infernal, I came back, and I could have won if I'd killed off his Micro Machine. Shoot. Very clever play on his part. Got to hand it to him. He, he just outplayed me. That wasn't like uh, me losing to bad luck. Um, although, you know, luck helped him, because he had a freaking ridiculous draft. Much better than mine. But... Given that I had a worse deck than he did, um, he just outplayed me. Even so, because I had a chance there. <sighs> All right, well, we're at one and one. Still trying to get two wins here. E. Celio, the rogue. I. C. Leo, maybe? I don't know what that is. So we got to keep the farce here, even though it's got a really good chance of being wasted, because it's better to waste the battle cry than to have nothing. We replace a four drop with a four drop. Rogues have a lot of things they could play. Well, not a lot, but there's a decent number of things that Dark Bomb doesn't really look so hot against, so I might end up life tapping. Then this wouldn't be a wasted battle cry. Please just pass the turn. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Young Dragonhawk. Wow. Is that worth Dark Bombing? Can't be. Just can't be. This would have actually been a really good card to have at the start of the turn, though, because that would have been the perfect answer to this Dragonhawk. Well, we'll see. If she, you know, puts cold blood on it or something, I can, you know, as a, an emergency situation, deal her with her and play the Dark Bomb on it. Mortal Coil would have been nice to have as well. The Panther, huh? Well, I can't do anything about the Panther. So this hits me for two. A little scary, but I should be okay. I have two Violet Teachers in my deck. Interesting. So let's play that. The Panther does get to kill off this... But if she kills us with, say, Dagger Backstab or some other means, and I get hit for six, that's actually kind of scary all of a sudden. Then I probably could not really afford to just play Violet Teacher. I'd have to Dark Bomb the Panther and play a Spider. Hmm. Oh, she throws the Dragonhawk away? What the... All right, I guess she's playing around Mortal Coil, but I'm pretty content with that. I can either Dark Bomb this and play the Spider, or I'm going to go for the bigger move here. Let's play the Teacher. So this encourages her to dagger and kill the teacher with the panther and the dagger instead of playing an actual four drop. And then the joke's on her. After she doesn't play a good four drop, I just play another teacher. An interesting interaction with the teacher is that if I cast Shadow Flame on the teacher, I believe this should actually uh, give me the 1-1 one, one before the Shadow Flame goes out. Butts. So she's going to do this and get out a bunch of board pro- Oh, she went for the face. Uh, hmm. Well, interesting. 
I could Shadow Flame here, but that seems a bit aggressive. Why don't we Dark Bomb the Panther? Get a student. Let's buff the student so it doesn't auto die to the dagger. Kill her big Murloc. And I'm at 19 health, 18 if she daggers me. She's got five cards. I should be okay, especially because I got this Defender of Argus here. For some nice tauntage. I've got good four drops. Shadow Flame is a panic button. Although Shadow Flame isn't going to kill anything big, like if she plays a really big five drop here, or worse, a big six drop next turn. Okay, how's she going to use that? She could just kill the cleric with it, or she can run it, plus the dagger into the teacher. Looks like she wants to get rid of that teacher, which is smart, because the teacher is a dangerous card. Give me a target for my Shattered Sun Cleric, so I have an extra... I guess I got like a free 2-2, two -two, sort of. And unless she has a backstab for this, it's not that big of a deal. I can just kill the Raging Organ. And it looks like that's what I'm going to do. Should have put the spiders in the middle in case of betrayal, but hopefully that won't be a big deal. Now I can deal up to four damage to everything with this Shredder. I can also buff the Shredder for five attack if she plays something large. Something like a Sunwalker would be annoying. Volcanic Drake is actually not a problem at all. She spent her entire turn playing something I kill for free. That's not a problem. Oh, please don't be Doomsayer. I should have technically done this first, just in case it had been a Doomsayer. Then I wouldn't have wanted to play any minions after it. I mean, the odds of that happening are small, but, you know, ideally that's how I should have played it. All right, so I got this big board here. She's only got four cards. It's going to be difficult for her to get back. What could she use? Uh, Blade Flurry would be a start. She'd have to have, like, a Deadly Poison or an Assassin's Blade or something to go with it. Well, she could have a Blade Flurry here. If she hits the Teacher and then Blade Flurries, uh, everything is going to die except for this. She could instead hit this. The fact that she's hitting this means she does not have a Blade Flurry, which is great. Okay. I think it's time to play the Crusher. So we get her down to... Uh, 15, play a 9-9, nine, nine. and yeah, I can life tap. I should have life tapped first. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I wasn't going to play the Seed Giant anyway. So could she kill me? 14 damage with 4 cards? I mean, it's possible, but I think it's possible anyway, but very unlikely. If she had, like, Deathly Poison, Blade Flurry. Alright, we gotta win. So, got lucky after playing badly. And then we got a pretty free win versus that rogue. Just need one more win to get my daily quest board open. And the other daily quest I could actually do in Tavern Brawl. So maybe if uh, I'll try that after this. And uh, like I said in the Tavern Brawl video, if I do manage to get Nefarian, I'll start recording. And show that. Although, uh, it seems the consensus for this week's Tavern Brawl is that Nefarian is actually a lot easier to win with than Ragnaros, which makes uh, my achievement in the last video, no spoilers, okay, I'm about to do spoilers, of winning twice in a row with Rag, all the more impressive. We're up against Cyrillic Alphabet here. This is actually Kira. Kira in Russian. Kira. Very normal name. And do I keep the dwarf? I'm going to keep the dwarf. Now, normally I wouldn't keep the dwarf in a situation like this, where it's 2, 3, 4. I'd rather mulligan the 4 for an extra you know, chance to get a one drop, but here with the spiders, I'm more likely than average to actually have a minion to put the dwarf on, so I figure it's worth going for. Please don't do anything. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow, she says greetings first. Never say greetings first if you're a rogue. Ugh, noob. Frickin' Russians. Seriously. Does she have something? That, does she have an SI agent or something? Is that what this is? It's an ogre brute. Well, it could be worse. So the brute just trades with my cobra. And also has a chance of whiffing and hitting my face. So that's fine by me. If the ogre hits the spider, they'll be at 3 health and I can Dark Iron Dwarf one of the spiders that pops and finish off the ogre, saving my cobra. Although I can't fathom that she wouldn't just kill the cobra here. Alright, please do not miss. Yep, hit my face. This person actually is new. Basically, you should always attack the thing that you want to hit. That gives you the highest odds of actually hitting it. So she messed up. 
And went for the face, should have just went for the Cobra, it looks like. And now we're in really great shape. I actually have a couple of different ways I could do this. I could play the teacher, but uh, why, why slow things down? Let's just beef up the spider, kill that, kill that. Now I've got my five drops ready to go. High health total ahead on the board. She doesn't have a dagger out. So she has to pay half her mana if she wants to kill one of these with her hero ability. And then I get to play Sludge Belcher to protect the other one from her dagger, if that's what she does. Trog. Hmm. So I got a couple different ways I could do this. I could uh, play the Violet Teacher and then run my dwarf into this and uh, Mortal Coil it. That gives me up a card. The problem with that, of course, is then Fan of Knives kills everything but the Teacher. I could just play a Sludge Belcher, throw the Dwarf and the Spider at it. The Dwarf lives and I get a Sludge Belcher. That actually seems better. So I have Sludge Belcher protecting the Dwarf from her hero ability. I killed her thing. I went up a card. Still have this if I need it. Dragon Infernal is not playable at the moment because of my own stuff dying, but that's not a big deal. All right, how to do this? I could play this and Mortal Coil that after running at it with the Sludge Belcher. That seems fine. So this is a bit greedy because um, that does expose me a tad to Fan of Knives. But I go up a card, I deal some damage, I establish a big board. I think this is a pretty good bet to take. If she does kill off my stuff with Fan of Knives, it makes it possible for me to play the Dread Infernal. Knife Juggler's not a big deal, and... Auto Barber's not a big deal, so don't hit my Dwarf and we'll be fine. Alright, that's good. Annoyatron, hmm. So I could just Shadow Flame the Dwarf to kill her stuff. But what's the point of that, honestly? Let's just... Yeah, let's just kill that. Play this. Kill that. And play this. Now that was a bit greedy, uh, damaging the Violet Teacher instead of playing this. It exposes me a little more to Blade Flurry, but I got the Sludge Belcher still. I don't think she has the Blade Flurry. I think she would have used it last time if she had it. To get rid of that dwarf. Yeah, she takes some damage. Salted dog. Well, now she's running into a bit of a problem that her health is just going to fall real low. I've got 7 plus 3 is 10 damage, 11 damage. Hmm. 11 da You know, that's just not worth it. Let's, uh, let's hedge my bets. I'm going to hit this. Play a couple of creatures. And I'm not going to trade the teacher for that salty dog. I'm just going to do the 4 damage to the face. So I'm setting up for lethal here. This, I believe, works well with the boss because it deals damage to everything. Then this spawns a nymph. And then the imp should appear after the damage has already been dealt. Anyway, we win! Alright, so we finished off that daily quest. Oh, I could have made some more progress on that if I had killed the salty dog. Well, that's fine. That, that, old, that quest will get done. So, we're off to see the wizard. What do I care about in this run? I don't know. I don't know if I'd be all that sad. You know, about dying right here, for example. Sure, it's always sad to lose, and I'd complain and say some swear words, but... It honestly doesn't uh, seem like that big of a deal. This, I was never that excited about I was never that excited to play Warlock. It's just a thing I do because I have to. Well, I don't have to, but... It's a thing I do because I want to, but it's not my favorite class to play. Saint, good game. Right, quite the quite the curve here. Oh, Power of Overwhelming, that's in this deck? Ugh. And it's a good card if you're going aggro, but I don't know if aggro works all that well anymore. I feel like there was a window early on in Hearthstone Arena's life where aggro was actually viable, but now it just seems like there's too many tools to stop it in the arena. Unless you get some wicked amazing deck, it's just not worth going for. And that makes this a very touch-and-go kind of card. Unless you have a really good target for it, that you don't mind dying. It's just not that great. Alright, pass the turn, please. Pass the turn. P.S. the turn. P.S. P.S. it! P.S. the turn!
Pish, 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 pish. Thank you. All right, let's play that imp. Now we have some options. I can go for this to set up power overwhelming, or I can just go for this, which is a bigger body. I could also coin into the boss, but that doesn't seem right. This deck has a fair amount of expensive things, and I could see myself using the coin later. Is he going to make a totem or play a creature to trade with my imp here? Mm. Looks like either that or he, this is about to die. Oh, the loot hoarder is really good against the imp. Hmm, because it just goes up a card. Butts. Well, all right, here's what I'm going to do. This is a bit greedy, but I'm going to try to protect the imp. And essentially, I'm still going down a card, but at least I'm going down a card, you know, losing... A less significant card. I could have also fished for Mortal Coil, but that doesn't seem right. This is bad if he has Forked Lightning here. Luckily he doesn't, so he goes up a card. Just straight up, up a card. And I don't want him to play something that has four health. Ah, spider. No, don't play anymore. Stop, stop playing things. Pat, thank you. You only play one thing. Jerk. So why not pop the spider? Well, I want to keep this hole to maximize the odds that there will be something for Imp Gang boss to run into on the next turn. I might coin into a Kodo if I pop these spiders. Then the Imp and the boss could finish them off. Although it's just the same to pop first and then play the Kodo. He's got nothing, except for Totem. This is, I don't know, both good and bad. It's bad, of course, because it deals damage, but it's good because it gives me a target for the boss. Fork Lightning. Well, I'm glad he didn't have that earlier, because that would have been real bad. So I get an Imp. What is his strategy, then? Lightning Bolts. Well, not the greatest. I got two Imps. And he's overloaded for three next turn. Alright, let's uh, hold off on that Kodo then. Let's play the Engineer. Maybe I will get a Mortal Coil. Eh? No. Not quite. And uh, I don't want to kill that Totem. Let's just actually pop his spiders. The reason I'm popping them is that... Uh, I don't want this thing to necessarily be gone because this is... Actually, I probably should have gotten rid of this, so he could. He, so that would have. De um, I just made the wrong move. I should have killed this, because it reduces odds of getting a good totem. Whoops, that was that was wrong. Anyway, so he's overloaded. He's got nothing. Um, we'll play the Kodo. It doesn't. It's not not that great here, I, I suppose. But oh, should I save the Kodo? No, you know what? Let's just play it. I'd rather it hit the spider than the healing totem. It does, that's nice. So he's not overloaded anymore. Fire Elemental is actually pretty good, but not the end of the world, because the Kodo can survive it. He's got six cards. I have four, kind of, in my hand and a coin. A lot of health, though, so I can do some life tapping to catch back up. Sunwalker. Well, that could be worse could really be a lot worse. So we pop the shield with the Kodo, put Power Overwhelming on the spiders, and I think here's where I use the coin. I'm gonna kill off that totem, coin, play that shredder. Could have also played this guy, but I'd rather uh, clear his board and get more stuff on my board than just a 6-6. The fact that this could be better later is just another reason why I didn't want to play it there. Next turn, I could either play this anyway if I get nothing better, or I could take my chances with Life Tap. If I got a good 5-drop, like my Smith or my Sludge Belcher, I would definitely Life Tap to get up a card. Right now, I've got the board advantage, but card-wise, these are all pretty weak, and I only have two in the hand, so... You know, um, it wouldn't be the worst thing to get up a little on cards and cement my lead. Do 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 do. Hoink. So 
So I'd say I have the advantage here, but uh, it's uh, it's anyone's game at the moment. He really only needs one or two good cards to make it back, like Lightning Storm, for example, or just wipe out most of my stuff. Is that a Fire Elemental I see? Yeah, he's debating where to, where to, where to, where to, what to kill with it. No, he's a Frost Elemental. Oh, I did not see that coming. Hmm. All right, well, I think Mr. Tinkers makes the most sense here, rather than this guy. So let's uh, life tap first. Always draw cards first. Defender, very nice. So let's play Mr. Tinkers. I think the Kodo and the Bluegill have done their job. I don't want to play the Rusty Horn, because I do have some Violet Teachers in here. That would be great. Synergy that could turn these to turn in, turn a vile teacher into ascension and then also get a one one. Got a four 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 three. Twisting nether is not the greatest removal here, but I can also buff things with the defender and I got these spiders for extra damage, so it's looking pretty good. Ah, that thing. He got the minimum roll, which is still enough to kill any of my stuff, so it's a good time for him to get the bad luck out of the way. Actually, if I buff this to the Defender, it will be relevant that this is only minimum, because then well, as a 5-5, five, five, this could hit the Destroyer and live. Which I'm sure he'd be very unhappy about. I could also ignore this and just play the Crusher, because I can get him down to uh, 15. And then the Crusher would be a 9-9. Nine, nine. Got the 1-1. One, one. That's annoying here, because I uh, would have liked... To not have to take damage uh, on my units for this. Well, let's stick to the plan. So we'll do this. That seems pretty logical. And I will actually kill off this annoying one one, um, just so that it doesn't cause me any trouble. I don't. I could heal myself for some extra life taps, but I'll heal this instead so it doesn't die to shocks of various sorts. Rocketeer will kill off Mr. Tinkers. Alright, so here is where I think we play the Crusher. 7-9, yep, it's going to be enough. So we life tap. Sea Giant. Hmm. This might be my last chance for Sea Giant if he kills a whole bunch of stuff, you know. The Sea Giant might not get played. But no, let's, let's make sure that we get uh, that. And do I put a Rusty Horn on it? Uh, there's really no point. If he has a Hex, he's going to use it on this regardless, and the Taunt's not going to save it. If he hexes this, there should still be enough creatures on the table for me to play Sea Giant next turn. And if he doesn't have a hex, then I pity him because he's really in a lot of trouble. Is that a Fire Elemental? Am I right this time? His best bet, honestly, I think is killing this Shredder and hoping a Doomsayer pops out. I don't know how he's going to catch back up if he doesn't pull that off. Yes, it was a Fire Elemental, and is that left card from his hand a Hex for my Crusher? No, it's a Taunt, oh gosh. Well, that does reduce the possibility of my winning this one. Wait, no, uh, almost. I can run the Shredder into this Hellfire, take him down. Yeah, this is almost enough to win it. Ah, is that worth it? I think it's worth it. Let's do this. Unfortunately, I'm going to lose this to the whatever pops out of here to the Hellfire. Hmm, that's not the greatest. That means my thing takes more damage. But uh, let's play Sea... Actually, let's play Sea Giant. Yeah, let's just play the Sea Giant here. It will be damaged. But this is, you know, kind of difficult for him to deal with. A 9-5 and an 8-4. Supposing he does kill them both, I can life tap freely. Okay, does he have another Defender of Argus to give him both taunt? No, he doesn't. All right. Well, exceeding all expectations lately. Tavern Brawl exceeded my expectations, and this Warlock run exceeded my expectations with 4-1. 
Oh, almost. Well, unless I have some catastrophic game where I manage to kill not a single minion, that quest will be done soon. No. I'm doing some stretching and yawning here because I need to narrate everything I do. Let's um, see how far we can go. We got 15 minutes left in this video. That should be good for a game or two. Hopefully I don't lose both the next two games. Just to, you know, keep the spirits riding high and all that. Here goes. Come on. Is it mage time? No, it's druid time. Wotan. The druid. Ah, well, it sucks to pass back all these good cards, but I think it's the right thing to do. Mm, we get a flame imp. This is actually nice, so I can flame imp. And then if he wraths or claws it, that sucks, but if he plays his own creature, I can dark bomb it. And then earthen ring farseer to cancel out the flame imp's damage on turn three. This looks good. Oh, zombie chow. Well, the zombie chow just trades straight up with the flame imp because it uh, kills the imp, but then heals back the damage the imp dealt, so. No progress made there. All right, he does do that, in fact. And plays the trog. So that's gonna die to, so we're just trading one for one here. I think a Noyatron would be dumb there. Because he could shapeshift and then kill it with the trog. Or just pop the shield off with the trog and play a 3 drop and then I'm nowhere fast. Shapeshift, and he has nothing to do on turn 3. Well, that's nice. Please don't have a 1 drop. Don't have a 1 drop. He has a 1. He has Angry Chicken. Oh my god. Angry Chicken. Well, I could kill it with the Tron, but I think that would be a poor use of my mana. So let's drop the Farseer. And next turn, I could either life tap in Tron, or I could coin for the Smith. And because Druids don't have things like Fireball and Polymorph, this is actually going to be a tempting play. All right, is this going to have more than one health? Unfortunately, it has only one health. So the chicken is going to get to kill it. And in light of this, I think I will just uh, get a card and play the Tron, because the Tron holds up reasonably well against this hungry dragon. I could coin into the Crusher next turn, which will kill this outright. Of course, then it dies to swipe, which is sad. He shapeshifts again. Interesting. So he kills the Tron right away. This will have five health, so it doesn't quite die to the combined efforts of these two. Unfortunately. Hmm. Problem is, if I buff this with the Cleric and send the Novice Engineer at it, the Loot Hoarder kills off my Cleric. So I don't think I really want to do that. Let's do this. Get rid of the Loot Hoarder and hit him in his face. So these two don't quite kill each other. Of course, the problem is that this thing gets the Smith down to one health and he can Shapeshift to finish it off or swipe to kill both. So I'm definitely behind. That Zombie Chow really screwed me up. He has another Hungry Dragon. Nuts. I get another 2-1. He's going to shapeshift again. Lots of shapeshifting. Is he actually going to kill this or is he going to kill my smith? He does go for the priestess. Hmm. So my smith actually can do some work. Alright. Let's buff the smith. Kill off the healthy dragon. Wait a minute. That thing doesn't die. Oh god. Oh my. I forgot that even with this it doesn't actually kill a full dragon. Well, that was just dumb. I think I lose the game now. Probably. Well, it's just, yeah. Whoops, I should have just killed this dragon. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Uh -huh, that was hilarious. Okay, uh, yeah, we're in trouble now. Definitely in a lot of trouble. Starfall clears my board, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. At least he's nothing, nothing better than the shapeshift, but geez. How could I have messed it up that badly? All right, well, um, let's play the Crusher. Soulfire, at this point, I hope it just throws the coin away. Unfortunately, it threw away my best card. He's got uh, five cards to my two. I can life tap freely, but if he has a good answer to this, like Iron Bark, I just lose the game. Well, that was, that was my own terrible play, so whatever. 
All right, so we have to throw the warrior and the crusher at this iron bark. Oh, I get lucky. Wow, that's very lucky. Whew. Okay. So we get to play this. And here, I think using the blue warrior makes very little sense. It can just get shapeshifted, and he's got plenty of mana to do so. So we'll just hang on to this. The coin, I guess, will be used to give me a token from the teacher. I can life, life tap a little more. Ah, okay. So now I actually don't have enough damage to kill this, because I only have six damage. So we're going to do this, this. Wait, I got a life tap here. Should have believed on that first. Uh, coin. Let's play this, because why the hell not? And we're going to pass the turn. That was a pretty good card for him. I could have just like waited, I guess, and not played anything and then tried to get a big twisting nether, but that would have required me to play correctly and life tap first. Once I didn't do that, I sort of missed the opportunity. Hmm. How do I catch back up after this? Okay, well, I could life tap for a few turns and just... Oh, he's going for the face. He's not killing my creatures. All right, so no more life tapping for a few turns. None of that. Power of Rome. Okay, let me actually play correctly and life tap first. Let's do this. Get a student. Kill that. Play this. Hit him in his fat, ugly face. Pass the turn. Okay, so he can get me down to eight, down to seven. I am going to die real quick. I... I'm not gonna be able to kill him very easily. He's at too much health. Twisting Nether is not super great here. Panther. Oh geez, I might have to use Twisting Nether just to, if he's gonna keep this stuff in uh, in stealth mode. Ah, it sucks that I have to lose all my stuff. I probably shouldn't have played this Shredder. Hmm. Well. I think this is all I'm allowed to do. Do I life tap here? I think I have to life tap. It's the only way I can catch back up. Okay. So Twisting Nether. I get a creature off of that Shredder. Not a good one, tragically. It dies to Shapeshift. And it's end to my Infernal. I can play the Shredder and the Infernal next turn. But whatever he plays here, it's just going to hit me. So he shapeshifts... Well, if he shapeshifts Loot Hoarder, that's good. That means I'm taking one less damage. Oh, is he, is he charging? No, he's not charging. Uh, okay. This is rough. Very rough. So he's going to hit me down to four, down to three. I'm dead to pretty much anything. Let's see if I can actually get some kind of a taunt. Mr. Tinkers. Not a taunt. Rusty Horn. Emergency Coolant. Ah, uh, it doesn't work. Okay, well, I'm probably dead. But there's a chance that with three cards he won't be able to deal three damage. I don't know. He's got four damage right there, and he sees it. He sees it. Oh, wow. Fuck. Almost. Almost pulled it out there. Damn. That was so close. All right, well, anyway, let's see what time it is. It's 38 minutes, so let's do one more game to see if I make it up to five wins, which is very respectable, or lose it four wins, which is also fine for me with Warlock. I think I just need to accept the fact that when I play Warlock, the expectations are just completely different from when I play any other class. That does mean that Warlock will just always ruin my average, but that's, that's life. I just spilled some water in my chair, so I'm wiping it with my butt. Not my naked butt, I am wearing pants. Just in case you were wondering. Alright, Warlock to Warlock. Le Dave Cron. Oh, it's Dave Cron, but French. <sighs> Let's keep a very easy mulligan. Alright, well, this all depends on whether he has a coin play or a one drop, which Warlocks are likely to have, because if he doesn't, I drop this, and then I can buff it with the Cleric and kill just about anything that he'd play on turn two. Um, if he doesn't play anything, or if he plays a 3-2, I can play this freshly drawn boss, which is very strong. If 
he dark bombs this, I really don't care because it's not a good creature. So I'm happy for it to just take a dark bomb. Please have three health. Have three health. Three health. Three, you fuck. Oh, God damn it. Definitely does not have three health. So there's no point buffing this with the cleric. So we play the boss. At least he used his coin. And I can catch up. I mean, the tank kills the grunt and then the boss kills the tank. I, the boss lives and I get a 1-1. One, one. I mean, it's not the end of the world. But if he has a way to kill the boss, like with Soulfire or Shadow Bowls, it's not that bad. I guess I can Dark Iron Dwarf to buff the imp that pops out and kill it. Yeah, yeah, right. Maybe I'm okay. That boss is so good, it's, dare I say, a boss. I could even kill the tank with the boss and then heal it with the Farseer. Now, that's not the good use of, that's not an efficient use of my mana, but... So it's an option. Okay, seems undecided. That's good. I, I bet if he had a Shadow Bolt, he would just play it on the boss and then call it a day. He really seems unsure of what to do. I don't, you know, I don't blame him. This is a difficult board situation, so I am not complaining that he's going to the rope. It clearly seems like he's thinking about it. So he's got the Dark Bomb for the Grunt. Does he have a Mortal Coil for the boss? He decides to do nothing. Oh, I see. Well, that's pretty clever. Leaving me with the tough decisions. Hmm. All right, let's just go for killing the biggest thing he has and putting the biggest thing I have and spending the most mana. So this thing will still kill that imp and give me another imp of my own. I used up all my mana, I got a good 5 drop on the on the play, on the, on the draw, so uh, just having a little bit of a better start than this guy, which is not necessarily indicative that my deck is better or that I'm playing better, it just seems like uh, my start was a little better. Ah, he has the Shredder. Okay. So I hate to play the Defender of Argus here, because it uses my mana awkwardly, but it does let me kill this and get an imp and kill that. Of course, he then still has a two drop. So maybe I could just play Sludge Belcher. Yeah, let's, let's just play Sludge Belcher. Wait a minute. If I don't play Sludge Belcher, I could actually heal up the boss and kill the imp and then life tap. But then I'm not developing my board as much and I'm leaving myself vulnerable to some counterattacks. So let's do that. Let's hit him in his face. Hope the Sludge Belcher holds against the Shredder. Warlocks aren't the best. They don't have any class silences. He can't siphon soul. Looks like he's got nothing better than to do that. Ooh, he actually gets a cheaper minion off of this. He can play a six drop right now. Whoa! That would be very bad. He could actually play a five drop still. This was a really good flip for him off of that shredder. And he has a Kodo to take advantage of it. Ouch. Well, luckily here, I feel like... Defender of Argus is fine. I'm going to life tap first, because you always should. So the buff on the dwarf lets me kill that, and the buff on the spooze lets me kill that. Now he could use Hellfire to clear out my board. If he does, he'd have four cards while five after life tap to my six, so I'd still be in the lead. I'd be dropping a six drop, a six six, on the table afterwards. Luckily, he doesn't even have Hellfire, so that's great. Does he have a way of killing this dwarf? He does. Well, that's unfortunate. Soul fire, you say? Buffing things lets me kill the Yeti. But if I have to throw both of them at it just to kill the Yeti, then I might as well play the Dread Infernal. Or I could ignore everything. I could just, um... Here's an idea. Yeah, let's do this. I'm going to play the Violet Teacher. I'm just going to buff... This thing so it doesn't die to mortal cause, but I'm not going to kill that Yeti. I'm going to go for his face. He seems not to have a lot of removal. He's way low on cards. I've got five damage that Warlocks have no way of blocking at all. Because this goes to the face. This obviously goes to the face. And if I can just do a little more damage, I'll win. Ah, alright. So he gets to kill off the defender. But Dread Infernal is just a really good card. It'll finish off that Yeti. Let's life tap first. 
play the Dread Infernal, which must be really backbreaking for him to watch. Now, this takes him down to nine. Next turn at nine man, I can drop like a teacher and a smith, which is really strong. I'm not worried about my own health because I got the Farseer. But I don't even have to use the Farseer on myself, I can just use it on this thing. Dark Bomb. Alright, that's not a problem. So let's see, can I kill him? Six, eight, plus four, is twelve damage. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can get some finishing power here. I can't. But I do have a Crusher. You know what, Let's, there's no need to, to do that. Let's just keep it simple, keep it safe. We're gonna heal that up, hit him in the face, bam. Play the Violet Teacher. And just say, okay, ball's in your court. What are you gonna do against my board of beefy creatures? And your low health total, you can't possibly kill me. This is a waste of five mana. Totally desperate here, there's just nothing he can do. Even a Sun Fairy Protector wouldn't save him. All right, well played. All right, we got it. We got it, 46 minutes, well-timed, well, well, actually not that well-played. Alright, we got it. Thanks for watching. Please like and or subscribe. I'll see you again soon with the rest of this run and maybe some more Tavern Brawl. Take care, everyone.